Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, CLC Paint YouTube channel, welcome back. We're going to continue on with part two of this waterfall scenery. If you didn't catch part one, go back and get yourself a blank white canvas and some liquid white oil paint and follow along with the tutorial or just watch it if you like ASMR things or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> if you like art. There we go. How about that? So right over here, we're going to have some bushes that come down. You can see we're basing this off that painting back there. And we're going to have some bushes that come down right over in this area. And then our cliff will come outside of that and come right down in here. We'll have a cliff right there, <clears throat> like so, and then on this side, we have some big old, big old plant things that come down and block off this cliff, and this cliff over here is going to live somewhere right there. <clears throat> Just to give you an idea of where we're going, then down here on the bottom, we're gonna have some water. Maybe I'll add some greens just to make it interesting. There we go. There we go. Just adding color. Wow, it's so bright. So when I turn it this way, you can kind of see without the shininess of the light. But maybe the camera will adjust. That's all right. That's all right. All right, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get ourselves going here. Let's take shoot. let's take pure Van Dyke brown. So I put a bunch of bunch of piles of brown here. I'm just gonna grab a load on the knife. There we go. Got a load on the knife, and maybe we'll start on this side. And so we're we're blocking off what was back there. So do a little overlapping over the splashes there. And then bring, bring this guy. You almost want it to like it's coming down and then it comes up higher. And it's like it's <clears throat> it's like it's poking out here over the edge. I'm gonna hold the knife like this to get that angle of the knife to work for me. So it comes up and comes down. I'm just trying to shape some cliff here. So I'm like that. And if you think it's too blank right there, then go ahead and do something like that. And just kind of cover up wherever you want to hide whatever part of your waterfall you want to hide. And then this, we're just gonna fill in some color here. I'm gonna have bushes coming down there, so don't worry too much about that. And something like, now we're gonna fix the shapes. So we want the top edges here to have a flat feel. So you do some flat strokes. And then if you want to wipe the knife, you can reload the opposite side, the little corner, and then you can come in and work with that guy. And he'll help you out with creating these shapes and then pull straight down wherever you want the cliff parts to be. And I have that be a flat little edge there. And this will be a flat little edge here. Little cliff part there. And see, I'm overthinking this already. I should just should just throw it in and move on to highlights. All right, <clears throat> let's do that. Now, we grab some of our white little roll. It's not very tall. It's just a little roll of white on the knife there. And we're gonna do the same thing we did back here. Just just grazing it and we'll let these colors begin to mix. 
And so where we want it flat, we'll pull across it flat at whatever angle we want. There we go. There we go. You can go back over it as much as you want these colors to mix. I'm gonna put a little bit right down here. Like that's a little ledge there. That's a little ledge. Make this a little clearer for you to see. And then another little ledge for me down below that, and then just pull it straight down. And see how just by putting lines of white on there, I created like three different ledges. Maybe this ledge, watch, comes up over here, something like that. And then Kind of connects up to this one, maybe. Who knows? And then pulling straight down to create the cliff edge effect. And if you want that to be a bit darker underneath there, get that shadowy feel, just go back and get a bit more brown. Yeah, I like that. And if you want to add some dark speck in here, you're more than welcome to do whatever you like. To me, that's a nice little, nice little dirt area. Maybe there's just a touch of it. Something working its way around right over here. Something like so, then pull straight down. Beautiful. And then I'm going to want to put a little shadow underneath of that. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's some rocky looking, rocky looking little dirt area there. <clears throat> and see, that's going to keep your waterfall in place. I think maybe we need a, just a outcropping there, something like that. And what's going to happen at the bottom? Go ahead and put that in so it makes sense. I'm gonna take our blue, our light brush from earlier. Just gonna do little circles here on these edges, just to soften it. So it'll blend away nice and easy, All right? Wipe that off on paper towel. I'm like narrating. It's a good thing I enjoy narrating this entire thing. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't make the best. I wouldn't make helpful content. But I'm here to try to try to help you out. Maybe, maybe even teach you a thing or two if that's possible. Wow, see that? She's using this little edge to wiggle in some more shapes in there. So this has its own top. Everything needs. Highlight and a shadow. Mmm. Mmm. I like that. And it's going to be misty down there, too. So. so, let's go ahead and get our fan brush from last episode where we did the water and the splashes. And we're going to load right into the same titanium white pile. Touch. Just a tiny touch of liquid white. Just to thin it down. You can wiggle it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe I maybe I've got a cough, but hopefully that worked. <laughs> now, dun, 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 dun. now I'm going to start to do little circles, maybe, maybe even splashes. Yeah, some splashes. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. That feels good. See the water splashing up in there. Shoot, maybe it's really splashing over here. There could even be another waterfall over here. I'm just gonna show you, if you wanted to, you could do something like this and have splashes over here. 
And you could have a whole nother waterfall in this corner. Now I'm not sure how you'd make it make sense because I'm gonna have trees come in and block this corner off, but you can definitely do that if you want to. And then that would add to the river. Little splashy guys. But I think in my world, I'm just gonna have bushes and trees and stuff over there. So for now, just put some splashy things. And then if you need to grab another touch of blue just on the edge there and add it in. Watch. See that? Watch. It makes a difference to have these colors happening in here. It really does. It'll pay, it'll pay off in the long run. See, this is supposed to be misty down here. So I'm gonna do some Making some noises and some splashes and stuff like that. The water's just having fun. Gonna put some blue back in here. Mmm, see? See how it just does itself? Like, look, you can make a little wave if you want. And then when we add the water and the swipes, or, you know, the splashes and the swipes, it just, it just happens. It's so beautiful, this painting method. I'm gonna swirl up my waterfall over here. Maybe some blue, maybe some blue, and then load back into some titanium white. Some splashes again, swipes. There's some splashes down here. Something like that. Oh yeah, that looks good. I'm liking it. And we'll just keep doing it. Maybe some splashes over here, and some swipes. Keeping your little dark blue spot that you made if you did. Either way. Either way is fine. Maybe, maybe just a darker. Maybe it gets darker as it gets closer to us. This blue color. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. And then grab some more white and right back on top of it, just splashes. Little sweeps. All right, I think we got something nice there. And see this dark area really stands out. That's what we want happening now. Now that we kind of know what's going on here, maybe we'll finish this side first and then we'll do that side. So we like we know what we're doing. So, are we gonna need our light brush anymore? Yeah, for highlights, okay. Let's use then this brush, our big one from the very beginning. Very beginning. And we're gonna need some dark. So I'll grab a touch of the Van Dyke Brown Good little chunk in the edge of the brush there. And we're gonna run that right through our thalo green. I'm gonna grab a touch of blue here, put that right in it too. And just let those become one color. Let those become one color and tap them. Yeah, it's tough to see, but can I get the light? Anyways, you'll, you'll get the paint like coming up like sticking off. So yeah, see that texture right here? That's when it's ready to go with that corner onto the canvas. Let's see if I can get it to refocus again now. Dang it, I did this once before. Uh... <laughs> oh well, anyways, you take that corner with those sticky, like paints like shooting up, and it causes that texture to happen on the brush. And then when you come up here, you just, you really only have to touch and it creates that texture on the canvas. 
No, it's blurry. Let's see if we can. Yeah, there we go. Fixed it. Now you can do this tree like this one over here if you want, or you can just have them be maybe not as big. Yeah, I need more black in that color, so I'm gonna grab more brown, pull it right back through, tap it so it gets that texture, and then come just put that texture right on the canvas and see how the darks make a big difference there. If you mix a uh, phthalo blue and a lizard and crimson, I get you a nice dark color too. So it's a lavender color. It's wouldn't quite go with my green theme going on here, but let's get some more brown. Next cliff might have some green in it because I've been mixing my brown. I'm literally just touching the canvas with that corner of the brush until it runs out of that thick paint. And then I just tap the pile of paint again. Touch the canvas again. And I'm gonna to wanna to get a lot of paint right now because I'm gonna cover up, cover up something here. <clears throat> so I got a lot of paint now, tap it again, almost forgot. And we're trying to cover up this corner of the dirt here with bushes. So let's go like right there. I don't want to destroy my dirt. I'm just trying to block off the corner with bushy dark color. Like so. And see, because that's darker, it makes it look a lot closer. Makes it look a lot closer than the stuff that's back there. See, we got our splashes coming up against these bushes. Uh, I think what happens is this. Can't really see that painting back there in the corner. It's, it's covered up by that little mini canvas right there. Yeah, and then we'll have this come down and block off our river. How about that? How about that? Just to get the paint on there quickly. Just get that color in the corner. And then we'll have something similar going on over here. After we put in our cliff. Don't worry, didn't forget. Yeah, okay, get that nice dark. See, when this dark, dark color, you can do it darker than I've done here if you want. You can do midnight black or black for yours. I just was sticking with this Van Dyke phthalo green blue mixture here for the whole painting, just to make it easy, quicker. Already 40 minutes on the first episode. Who knows how long into this one? 20 maybe, I guess 20. All right, take that dark color. If you press it up, it makes these little grassy textures. And then we'll have some down here. Very nice. It's not quite dark enough in the corner for me. Get that Van Dyke brown down there. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. See, to me, it looks like this is just blocking off that water back there. All you can really see is these bushes, big old tree things going on. Maybe if you're feeling real crazy, you can take a chunk of that. Take a line of that brown on your knife and just, just do a big old, big old tree trunk on the side there. And that'll, that'll help push some things into the background. It'll make it look like this area is in front of the back area. And that's really important in this entire technique is the overlapping, the colors and the distance using the shapes and the colors. 
Now we're going to grab a touch of white. Put it down right there. And ever so carefully. Like I said earlier, when doing the dirt, it'll be pure white at first, but then it'll pick up the dark color. And when you go back over it, it should begin to blend. This is going to be a bit weird here because mine's going to blend with the green. You want yours to stay pretty brown. Maybe even I'll wipe my knife off. Grab a slight touch of the Van Dyke. Oh, yeah, there we go. There we go. I could probably even put yellow in this and it would look nice. Just touching up here just to give it the highlighted edge. And there we go. Got ourselves a tree trunk. And we'll get a little stick sticking out here and there. Something like so. You can do scrapes too if you want. Kind of give it like little branch looking things. There we go. Like that. I like that. This has been a fun painting today. Glad you decided to join me. Glad I decided to join you. <laughs> All right, let's let's get this other side and we're gonna have to turn the easel here for my for my convenience. All right, and let's just glance back there. Let's just go ahead. It's like the bushes are more up here and then we'll just do our cliff edge like right here. And see, notice that this top edge is slightly taller than the waterfall. Slightly taller. I'm gonna have to reload the knife here, get most of the paint up on the top edge because that's where I'm working with at the moment. And bring it in, just do some wiggles like so. Wiggles. And just smear it in from over here. And make it tall out here. Maybe it comes back, comes back in. And disappears like right down there. Something like so. See, it looks weird when you just slam it in there. But once you put some splashes around the edge and then bushes around the bottom side, or splashes like this one did. It looks just fine. I think this one will have splashes right here and then this whole area in here, I'm just putting some dark in for shadows. It's gonna be bushes. That'll be our bushy area and then the bushes will come back out. So you get some dark. <laughs> And we'll have some bushes down here too. I want that to be nice and shadowy down there like this. And then we'll put some highlights on top of it and everything will be nice and complete. Nice and complete. Now, oh yeah, I still need that. Now, grab some white, set it over here, grab a little bit, play it across. Yeah. Slide it through the brown, blend it a bit. Oh yeah, there we go. This is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful little outcropping here. See, I can't help. I'm just making noises and having fun. This guy comes down. See that? It comes across and then down. 
And then you get a little bit more white to add on to the highlight up at the top. Perfect, then it comes down. And then there's another little flat part right down here. And then pulling that down. Oh yeah. And in here it's darker. So that's where the shadow's at. I'm a little shaky, but it helped that time. Made it real natural looking. Sometimes when you're shaky, that's a good thing. Real natural looking dirt and rocks and stuff. And have a highlight right down in that little, right down in that little foot ledge there. And see, all I gotta do is touch a bit of shadow in here. And that looks like another nice little rock outcropping. And you can see just how easy it is to go back and forth with these colors. If you want more shadow like I do at the moment, to really make it stand out. Because the secret of this whole thing, as you've noticed, was dark and then light. You know, dark against the light, or dark against the light, dark against the light. Whatever, it's a contrast game. And then when we put the dark dirt over the light green, then we came back and put the white over the dark dirt and then back to the dark blue over the white. And the blue was already there. We put the white on top, but it's the back and forth of the light and dark colors that make all of these things happen. If you just have flat old colors happening, you don't have a lot of depth and contrast and action in your painting. And I'm just getting some extra paint on here, maybe. And yeah, maybe we'll smear it down there just to add some shadow colors in. All right, I better respect your time. And so I'll try to finish this up pretty quick here because we still got a little bit of highlights to do. So, <clears throat> We're gonna do, back to our fan brush, wipe it off paper towel, grab a touch of liquid white, pull back through the titanium white, which is pretty blue for me now. If you need more white, always uh, feel free to grab some. I'm gonna take that and we got some splashes going on. Just, and then just wipe it and And like so. All right. <clears throat> yeah. There we go. And just feel it. it you'll, you'll feel it when you like it or not. This is darker than it looks because it's shining in the sunlight. Keep that in mind. If I had a better lighting situation, I'd... that's not... perfection is procrastination. <clears throat> it's like, just don't worry about it being perfect. Just do it. And when you do it, then over time, it will become perfect. That's a life secret. Remember that. Perfection creates paralysis. Analysis, over-analysis leads to paralysis. If you're worrying and thinking too much about how to do it, you're not gonna be it. We are human beings, not human doings. And I didn't come up with that quote. That's a, that's a good quote to look up if you never heard that one before. Now take our brush, slam it into our brown, pulling right through, and then I'm gonna tap it into our green pile up here. Maybe just grab some blue too. Why not? 
Why not? I'm just blending all those guys on the brush and on the palette. See, now those paint things are getting real thick, like the texture of it. It's kind of like that wall or ceiling texture that's like got those spikes, kind of. I don't know how to describe it. I'd probably be a smarter artist if I, <laughs> if I knew what that was called, but all right, let me just, now we're just gonna take this, overlapping the water in the back, so it looks like it's behind this, and the darker color to show that this is closer in the foreground to us. Something right down here. Like so, little connector spot, and a little fancy looking bush sticks out right there. And if you feel like this needs to be bigger, go ahead and expand it however far you want it. And there we go. That's just about all it takes. And we're gonna do the highlights just as easy. So hope you're ready for that. Now, dun, boom, boom, boom. Mm. grab yourself some cadmium yellow. And set that on your palette, wherever it makes you feel good, preferably away from your dark colors. And I think we'll also use some Indian yellow, which is more of a orange gold color. I think it's more orange. Because then there's yellow ochre, which is actually really gold. It's almost like a brownish yellow. That's good. If you use that yellow ochre in this dirt, you get beautiful. Get some beautiful dirt effects. Keep that in mind. All right, and since we got liquid white here on the palette, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna take this brush with a little bit of blue in it, but it's a still it's still our light colored brush. Touch the liquid white with the corner and that stuff's wet, so watch out. And whew, there's a lot of oil in this yellow. Let's show you what we're doing over here. See how easy that stuff is moving around as compared to the other pile I was working with in the previous video. I'm just gonna tap. And the, the blue eventually will blend to create a green. So I'm grabbing some of the yellow ochre now and maybe a touch of the bright red down there. So we got this kind of color going on. I'll touch the bright yellow again, which is cadmium yellow. Whoops. And you wanna do this kind of push because when you do that push, it creates those textures that we've been talking about. And then you use those textures. So you flip the corner that you're pushing down with over, take it to the top and shoot. Just, just touch. You know what? I'm tempted to put some sticks in the background. Maybe because we got this tree trunk over here. Maybe we need more of them. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do that? No, let's just do some highlights. Okay. I want one side to be a bit brighter. And think about where your branches are. Like this is a branch or this is one. This one comes out over here. And then there's in between areas, like down here is a branch. Right? And then there's another one underneath that. And that tree is just kind of sitting back there. I think we really do. I think we really do need some little stick things. And for that, we're going to need paint thinner. And I'll have to be right back.
Maybe instead of paint thinner, we'll use liquid clear. I don't get to use liquid clear that often. It's a nice, good, it's not, a, it's not on the top. It's hard to open. I had to get myself a new liner brush because the one I had before, it just the, the bristles weren't small enough. The bristles just weren't small enough. And that is some liquid clear. I want to be very careful with this liquid clear. Just set it over there. And I'm going to put my pure oil right at the bottom of this dark pile. And I'm going to wiggle it. You want this to be like ink. So I'm getting all the oil onto the palette. And let's find out. See, then you're going to spin it to sharpen it. And we'll take that and we're going to see what happens here if we've got enough. We've got enough. And we don't quite, don't quite have enough dark. Maybe I'll grab some of our Van Dyke Brown down there. We're going to need more liquid clear. You don't want to pour this out though. Just, just drip it out with your brush and then dab it onto the palette. I've had this thing this full for five years now or something. I mean, I'm sure there's people who use use their supplies more than I do, but I'll tell you what. And then just, then just start doing shapes. Like, even if you get weird colors going on, because you, you've got trees sticking out of these kind of forests. I'm just pulling the paint up out of it. Oh, there's a good one. There's a good one. So right now I'm just putting a bunch of lines and then we're going to come back with our dark color. Going to get a little bit more of this liquid clear, put it down by the Van Dyke Brown so it's just pure dark. Oh yeah, spin it. And let's make a tree trunk over here. And I'm kind of wiggling and spinning the brush as I go up. Because I want the bottoms to be kind of thicker and the tops to be a bit thinner. like a tree trunk should be. And yeah, maybe this guy is one. Yeah. And see already, we've got a thousand times more action going on in this foresty background because of Maybe that one's real tall. Over oh, here's some brown colors. And then a bright yellow one because I went through the highlight there. I'm just holding this because I don't want to spill it. Better hold it tighter. And so you get these pure brown ones sticking out of the back there. You kind of got to start up at the top unless you've loaded enough color. Something else though, it's just so much, it just continually amazes me that this is even possible, this easy, isn't that wild? All right, I like that. That's got a lot of action going on now. Now, you'd wanna wash your liner brush off. I'll do that here in a minute. I didn't make a mistake there. All right, let's put the lid on this bad boy. Put the lid on this guy. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. If you know where that quote's from, 
leave a comment down below. Smash the like button if you're getting value. Consider subscribing. We're almost to the end, ladies and gentlemen. Almost to the end. And so back to our highlight brush. And now we can just begin tapping. You see, I'm going to go in like a circular shape. See that? Use a little bush, and I'm going to vary the color here. Grab some of that yellow ochre, just tapping into it. So it's a little oranger, maybe. And down here, do a little, do a little bush guy. And he lives down under the dirt down there. And then maybe we've got some red or orange. So I'm tapping into the bright red. And yeah, maybe this guy has one of those bushes at the bottom of him. It's wherever and whatever you want. Totally up to you. I like that brush though. That's a nice one. Red's a nice color. I'm gonna tap some liquid white into my red pile because it's so so dry. Now we got this this burnt orange color. Maybe we got a red tree back here. Yeah. yeah, just like that. Mm. I like what's happening right here. Maybe some touch of the cad yellow. Some little grassy things. And then we want to overlap those little grassy things right there. I'm going to grab a touch of blue, just a swipe of it, and tap it into our yellow down here. It should give us a greenish color. I'm going to take that greenish color and go, nope, that was the same color that's back there. So grab more cad yellow, tap it. There we go. We'll use that instead. Yeah, see? Separators. That will separate that back there. Hopefully. Mm, getting a nice green color now. See, once this dark stuff blends with your yellows, it mm, gets real good. It gets real good. All right, and just keep on tapping wherever you, whatever highlight color you want to use. Just remember your darks with your yellows will make greens and your reds and stuff will give you more burnt colors, but just, just play. I'm going to do some taps back here. I don't want this background to be so detailed. I just want kind of hints of color it's like there is a bunch of bushes and stuff back there there we go you want your grassy things living down to the dirt areas and grab some more blue back to our yellow make a green here for these guys yeah, there we go. Like the look at that. That's a nice, that's a nice job. And these ones are literally just exactly what it looks like. Just tap, tap, tap horizontally. So you get these flat things. And see the variation of colors there is what allows it to happen. Like, like let's take a touch of red that orange red color, we'll put some of that right in here. And then that will give the bushes a variation. So it looks like there's a bush, another bush, the tree, this tree. It just makes you feel like there's all kinds of different things going on. Mm. I like that. I like that. Make sure everything is nice and soft. This guy's got some little branches going on back there. Yeah. Excellent. Maybe he does too. Yeah. 
just like so. And he's gonna need a little highlight on those, on those guys. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Some kind of little background for us, isn't it? And if you wanna go back in and add darks, you can always do that, you can always do that. Now let's just pull through a bunch of that yellow, Indian yellow there. I'm pressing it to get those textures. So all I gotta do is barely touch the canvas. And how do we wanna do this one? Maybe we'll keep this guy green and yellow. So we'll come over here. Horizontally, just, I'm just barely touching. And there's separators. So you have your highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. And you can angle it as you come out if you want. Grab some more of that color. Maybe a touch of the cad, cad yellow. Brighten it up a bit. If you want to, a little touch of liquid white. I'm just going back and forth between all these guys having fun. Tap it. Tap it. And, ooh, yeah, the texture's on that one. Textures are so nice. See, this guy's gonna come up and come back over. He's got some shape and maybe he's blended with that guy. This guy. Woo, he's got a little white, little white spot on him. See, now I'm pressing upwards. It's getting real green now. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Now, cat yellow, brighten it up a bit. You see, this for me is going to be a totally different bush. And because of the difference in color, and because we keep a dark area in it, it stands out, it's got a contrast, it's separate. And then it gets darker down here at the bottom. This ain't the best bush I've ever done. I've definitely done better, but it's whatever. It's fun. That's what it's all about. Boom. Little grassy things down here. Leave yourself some dark areas and we'll call it good. Maybe we'll do just a shiny little, shiny little guy right on the edge. And then maybe. That's one layer, and then maybe, yeah, right there is another layer. See how that created distance? You have your highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. Depth. Maybe we'll do a bit of a highlight right there. Get a touch of the white. See that white's too strong. I have to blend that in. So just touch it. Touch it a few times. Ooh, that's nice stuff. Stands out. Stands out. Creates like a separator area. Hmm. Nice. All right. I'm gonna keep it like that. I've just been working with the cad yellow mostly now. I'm gonna tap this guy like so. Just the corner of the brush. Up there. Make sure your highlights come across your tree trunk. Getting as much of that cad yellow as I can. Almost out of it. I'm keeping dark areas on purpose. It goes a long way once you're done. 
to have purposeful dark areas. And I'm just going to leave that how it was. A touch of the liquid white. At this point, if you need more bright yellow, go ahead and do so. I kind of like this dark green that we're working with down here. And so I'm just going to keep going with that. Maybe there's another yellow ochre bush right here. Yeah, give a little bit of variety. And this bush. This blocks off the tree trunk down here, and then there's a bush behind it. And we are just about done. Yeah, there we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think is a completed painting. Beautiful landscape. You can literally keep tapping details in here all day. Like if you wanted to add some darks up here, that might help. Maybe some little dark shadows right there. And then you can go back and put greens right on top of it. It's really whatever you want to do. I think I had a lot of fun. I'm just gonna touch up that bottom area there. Mmm, that's nice. That's nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Hope you got value. Uh, definitely subscribe if you like this. Smash the like button. Leave me a comment. And all those things help me. It helps YouTube and whatever platform we're on to know that people actually enjoy this content. So it'll want to share it with more people that enjoy and like this kind of like painting, like art, like life, like peaceful entertainment and like the beauty of nature <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen once again i am chase Carrington. this is the clc paint youtube channel and check the description below it should have a link to my etsy shop you can probably buy this painting in a week or two if i list it up I've got uh, over 40 paintings listed over in my shop and anything else that interests you in the description, just be sure to check that out below. All right. Be back in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed this one.